probably they're centrists by now. But the fact is that their own personal views have nothing to do with what gets on TV. Winston Smith worked at the Ministry of Truth. His job was to alter past news stories so that the version of the truth given by the ruling elite was never contradicted. One of the most troubling things about the media's handling of the 2000 election came a year later. A consortium of major news organizations hired the respected National Opinion Research Council, called NORC, to inspect the 170,000 uncounted votes. NORC was not allowed to characterize its findings. The media companies did that. And the disturbing thing is that they hid the truth by distorting the Florida Supreme Court's actual ruling, which called for the counting of all votes where the intent of the voter was clear. According to the BBC's Greg Pallast, who watched the North counting operation firsthand, one counter said, quote, it screamed at you. If someone circled Gore, exactly who do you think they wanted as president? The consortium did not comment on the exclusion of tens of thousands of clearly marked ballots, which the NORC data reveals. Instead, the consortium came up with a tortured analysis that showed Bush would have retained the lead under one method of counting, just the undervote. On December 24, 2000, on NBC's Meet the Press, the moderator, Tim Russert, said the following. Florida, Florida, Florida is over. The board is now retired. And that was pretty much the end of the mainstream news media's coverage of the Florida recount and the Supreme Court's decision to stop the counting of votes. Had Nicaragua had an election like this and the Sandinistas won, the very people who had won the Republican election would have insisted that we not only invade Nicaragua, but that all the people who engineered the election be held for war crimes. They know that they're not there serving at the will of the American people. They know that they stole this election and they created this fraud by keeping African Americans away from the polls. They know this. And they know they have very little time to enact their agenda because they know that they're going to get the crap beat out of them next time. Forget what the media is telling you, okay? This guy ain't going to last, all right? And he knows it. They all know it. But if they would do this, if they would stoop this low to steal our White House, what else would they do? What else are they capable of? What else are they capable of? I want to know. So what we have here is not the sunlight of democracy, but the dark, ominous shadows of totalitarianism, despotism, fascism. In a curious footnote, over the next two years, the Voter News Service, which had called Florida for Al Gore, was to be revamped for the 2002 midterm elections. Suddenly, exit polls had become unreliable. Then, on election night 2002, they weren't used. There were vague statements by the mainstream news media. As it turns out, the major networks own the Voter News Service. My guess is that the Voter News Service got it right on election night when they called Florida for Al Gore. According to congressional testimony, at that time, the Voter News Service projected Gore winning Florida by 7.3 percent, the equivalent of more than 300,000 votes. The Voter News Service was the smoking gun. It had to disappear. Welcome to Computer Voting, the newest twist in our voting process. With no paper trail. Uncheckable.
course, what everybody remembers is Big Brother. That's the cliche from 1984. Let me remind you of another part of the story. The leader realized that he needed the permanent war in order to frighten the people into giving up their rights. What happens when a group of people have unaccountable media power and can redefine the rules without being questioned? On September 25, 2002, as the United States moved toward war, relatives of the 9-11 victims spoke. This press conference was not on the evening news. My brother Jim Petorti worked on the 95th floor of the North Tower of the World Trade Center and lost his life on September 11. And one of the hardest things I had to do was to tell my parents that they would not be seeing their oldest son again. There's no one victim of violence in war is less or more important than any other. So my brother, who was seen as a type of collateral damage, in some fanatic's eyes, his, his death is no more or less important than the collateral damage of someone in Iraq or Afghanistan. It's a leveling uh, commonality that we have in this case. And so for those people who are making decisions about leading us into a very dangerous era, if they have an open invitation, they can come to my house over the holidays. My brother's birthday is right before Christmas. They can see what it's like to be around a family who's affected by war and terrorism. And we believe that this aggressive act, this unilateral act, will only inflame anti-Americanism that is already in the Middle East among Arab communities. It is a factor in leading fanatics to commit crimes in the like September 11th. And they're saying to America, look, don't use this as a basis to go to war. Without the sin, you, don't, you no longer have a democracy. You have a dictatorship. And that's what we're getting from the White House. Oceania is at war with East Asia. Oceania has always been at war with East Asia. Well, in the novel, of course, Oceania has not always been at war with East Asia. In fact, Oceania and East Asia were allies against Eurasia. But it, it suits the purposes of the inner party to make everybody think that the latest situation has always been the case. How is that any different from George W. Bush uh, constantly mentioning the horrific fact that Saddam Hussein gassed his own people uh, in, in 1988 at Halabja. How is it any different when at the time the U.S. actually had foreknowledge that he had uh, chemical weapons, knew that he had gassed his own people and did not protest back then? Saddam Hussein was uh, a darling of the Reagan and Bush administrations. The thing that is most amazing to me is the lying that goes on today. And um, You are now teaching, I'm not making this up, we are teaching damage control and spin. I remember in this country we used to call spin lying. Now we call it spin and we study it and we admire it. How to put out a line of bull and have it fly for more than 24 hours and then they high-five each other because they beat the other side if it's another party or it's another candidate. Uh, or it's another company, if it's one company with another with their annual report of their quarterly earnings or this or that. Public relations has overcome our whole society. It's all PR. Tommy sat at his computer, turned it on and tied it to the world. Brought a sense of baby with his enemies memory online and in line. Been taught to take advantage of the symbiosis. It's been well designed. Crazy. Corrupt me.